What do dinosaurs, glaciers, and breakfast cereal all have in common? Well, in this episode, I'll show you how they're all connected by this rock. Don't believe it? Watch and find out. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Hi, my name is Erin, and this is the rock of the day. What I notice is that the rock is very smooth, and I wonder why it has stripes and lines around the rock. Hey, Ethan, tell me the story of this rock. Thank you, Ari, for getting us started today. Look what she saw. Look at those stripes. Look at those layers, those thin, thin layers. Those layers are very strong evidence that this is a sedimentary rock. A rock like this, I would call a sandstone. Sandstone. Now, the other thing Ari pointed out was how smooth and round this rock is. I'm going to put it over here in our rock spinner, and I want you to start to wonder what could have caused that rock to take on such a rounded and smooth shape? Now, at the beginning, I promised you that this rock had something to do with connecting dinosaurs, glaciers, and breakfast cereal. That connection is the mystery puzzle we need to solve in the episode today. Let's start by talking about the breakfast cereal because actually, I'm still a little bit hungry. Do you know what cereal is made of? Cereal is made of crops, things that we grow, like corn or wheat or rice, things on the ingredient list. And what do those things need to grow? Those crops need good soil. Soil is made up of tiny little bits and remnants of rocks that have broken down, and that gets mixed in with some old leafy material that we call organic matter. That's what a soil is. Now, what makes a good soil is how many nutrients it has. When I say nutrients, I mean things that those plants need to grow, and those same nutrients are passed on to us, people, when we eat the food. Things like calcium, iron, potassium, also magnesium, zinc, phosphorus, and more. Soils get their nutrients from the rocks that break down to form them. Now, what if I told you that this rock came from a soil pit not too far from here. I know a soil scientist who dug that pit and found this rock. I want to go there with him to learn the story and to solve the mystery of all those connections that this rock can make. Hey, Justin. Good to see you. Thanks for meeting us out here today. Everybody, I'm with Justin Richardson. Justin is a professor at UMass Amherst here in Western Massachusetts. And uh, Justin, we brought this rock from the studio. We were taking a look at it back there. We noticed this really nice uh, layers that it has. It's uh, kind of dusty, too. We're pretty sure it's a sedimentary rock. I was hoping that you could tell us more about this, because uh, you, you know something about this, don't you? Yes, in fact, I'm the one who collected it here locally in western Massachusetts. Okay, so this is the guy that collected the rock, so you know where this thing came from. Where can you take us to tell us that story? Yes, absolutely. Uh, if we go this way, we can go check out where I collected it. Where you collected it? Yeah. Let's go take a look. Let's take it out. So, Justin, what kind of a geoscientist are you? Yeah, so I consider myself a soil scientist. Soil scientists, so soil, dirt, like the, the stuff below our feet that the plants are growing out of. Exactly. Okay. And uh, what does a soil scientist do? So as a soil scientist, I consider the non-living things like rocks and minerals and how they influence and affect living things like plants, trees, and animals. Interesting. So how did you get interested in this stuff? Yeah, so I got interested being a kid. I love playing out in soils and dirt and with my Hot Wheels and cars. Hot Wheels! <laughs> I had those too. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, and then I started growing plants and huh. I learned and realized that the different types of rocks and minerals and soils affected how do plants grow. So you got interested in rocks by starting with your interest in plants and living organisms. Yes. That's cool. I want to hear how this rock fits into that story. So let's keep going to this spot. Aha! So, is this it? Yeah, so this is it. This is a soil pit. It's the way that soil scientists are able to examine what's going on beneath the ground. So you dug this pit? Yes, so I dug this soil pit. Oh, okay. And what, what do you do with this? What, what can you see in there? Yeah, so with the soil pit, we can actually look at what kind of 
plants are living here, what kind of roots, but more importantly for us, uh, what kind of rocks are present and learn about the geology of the area. So did this rock come from this pit? <laughs> yeah, so that rock came from this soil pit. This is where he got the rock. So this rock came from underground. It came from in this pit. In fact, I can see there's a few places where I can see a bunch of other rocks kind of sticking out of the walls of the pit. Exactly. Interesting. Now, what does a soil scientist do with a pit like this? So I'm interested in how these soils hold on to water for trees to use to grow and also how they release nutrients that can get into drinking water or go into rivers. So the nutrients for the plants come from the soils and the soils depend on the rocks and minerals that are in there. Yes, absolutely. Like this one. Yes. And what can you learn about this particular rock being from this particular pit? Yeah, so based upon the uh, how round the rock is, we can actually tell that it's been moved. Uh, it had to have been moved by something very powerful that can round and turn a rock from square to a nice round rock. Mm -hmm. So we're actually up a hill, so it's very unlikely that a river has uh, deposited. This is a rounded rock that doesn't belong here. Why doesn't it belong here? Well, surprisingly, this is a sandstone, but this hill is made up of a different type of rock. It is? Yeah. What's it made out of? So if we look over here where all the other rocks came out of the uh, soil pit, we can find this type of rock. Oh, that is very different, isn't it? This one is that sedimentary rock. Well, this one has some stripes in it too, but over here, look at all that, that bright shiny mica. You see that? This is a metamorphic rock. Yeah, so uh, this whole hill is made out of metamorphic rocks, that like stuff. schist and gneiss. Nice. Yep. But this is a sandstone. So how did this sandstone get taken up and put on top of this hill? I see where you're going now. So this is basically an uninvited guest. So how did it get there? Yeah, so these rocks don't have legs. They were brought here by natural processes. So this rock here was brought here by ice sheets. The ice sheets. Tens of thousands of years ago, the great ice sheets that covered almost all of New England. Yes. So almost all the soils I work with here in New England, Massachusetts, are uh, glaciated. They're from glaciers. So you can find rocks that have been transported from long distances that end up in the soils every place that you look in New England. Yeah. So this rock, uh, the nearest outcrop is over two miles away. So it's been brought by the ice over two miles. So the, these giant ice sheets were able to transport things sometimes more than two miles, hundreds of miles away and drop them off, and it, you need to know the stuff that's in these soils to understand how good they are for life to grow. Absolutely. Wow. Justin, this is great. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Every Rock Has a Story. We'll see you guys back in the studio. Hey, so it was the glaciers, the giant ice sheets that brought this rock from miles away and left it in that soil pit that Justin was studying. When rocks get added to a soil, they change the nutrients that are available. This rock might have added nutrients like calcium or phosphorus into that soil to help the crops grow. If you're a farmer, you need to know what kind of soil you have so you plant the right crops in the right soils. Soils that you find here in New England are loaded with rocks like this because of the glaciers that brought them there. If you go further south in our country to places like North Carolina or Texas, you don't find rocks like this in the soil because the glaciers never went that far south. Now the last part of our mystery puzzle today was the connection to the dinosaurs. Well, it turns out that this rock is the exact same rock that we saw in episode two. That was the episode all about dinosaurs leaving their footprints in that red sandstone almost 200 million years ago in Western Massachusetts. We've now completed that puzzle Scientists love to solve puzzles, especially the ones that connect different things together in a surprising way. This would be a great time to finish your science journal page. I hope you've written the name of the rock, a picture of the rock, and then at the bottom, draw out the story, the puzzle that connected the glaciers, the dinosaurs, and those soil nutrients all together. What fun it is to do science and to imagine all the connections out there in the world. I want to thank Justin for being part of this episode, and I want to thank Ari for all her observations of the roundness and stripes in this rock that got us talking about this puzzle. I'll see you at our next episode. Bye-bye. But I want to start with the breakfast cereal because I'm still kind of hungry. This doesn't going to work. It's a little dry. Ha <laughs>
Yeah. I'm good. Somehow all these things are linked together. Ah. It's a good thing I like the kicks. We should just do the whole the whole shot of just me chewing on cereal without milk. That'd be great for you too. I'm gonna eat one and a half thousand boxes of kicks in a day.